Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about the sister planet of Earth, Venus. And more specifically about a very exciting mission that NASA is planning for the next few years and the contest that was just run by NASA that had some really incredible designs and winners. But we'll also talk a little bit more about the planet itself and why it's an exciting opportunity for us to advance science and potentially find an incredible object for us to colonize. Let's talk about this and welcome to the man. But I wanted to start with a little bit of history. This right here is what's known as the Vega probe. This was a Soviet probe launched in the 80s that was the last attempt by the Soviets to land on Venus and essentially try to retrieve as much data as possible. When it comes to planetary exploration, the Soviet Union and Russia didn't really have a lot of luck with Mars, most of the missions here were from NASA, but they had tremendous success with the partner Venus. And most of the information and most of the data we have about Venus is from the Soviet Union, from the Soviet space program. So for example, the first ever picture of the surface of Venus along with the information on the temperature, the pressure, the composition, were all more or less accomplished by the Soviet Venera and other similar missions that were able to survive for a few hours on the surface of Venus. And early on, we realized how extremely inhospitable Venus was not just to life, but even to the instruments sent to the planet. Essentially, nothing here survived for longer than a couple of hours, unless it was in the upper atmosphere. One of the last missions that Soviets were able to succeed in were actually part of the Vega mission you see right here and were these extremely robust balloons with a lot of instruments and communication devices attached to them that would fly around the upper atmosphere collecting all of the data and transmitting it via the orbiter around Venus. Now obviously this would have continued for a long time if USSR survived. We might have had even some sort of aerial colony by now if we continue these missions, but USSR is gone, Russia is no longer continuing Venus missions, and other agencies including NASA have only now started to pick up where it was basically left a few decades ago. But honestly, the new NASA missions are absolutely brilliant. And they're brilliant for a very unusual reason. And what's important here is that it might lead to a creation of an incredible new type of technology that we've never had before. But more accurately, it might actually lead to the re-explosion of the so-called automata, or mechanical technology. Something that was created in the ancient world and mostly for entertainment purposes, and something that was actually created over 2000 years ago. Such as, for example, this right here, this is the famous Antikythera mechanism that was created most likely over 2000 years ago by the Greeks to try to predict the motion of the planets across the sky. But there were these unusual automata in very different cultures across the planet and many of them were extremely advanced, but pretty much all of them were more or less only used for entertainment or recreation, not so much for actual science or any other productive reasons. Which is why the new NASA mission is so extremely exciting. It's not just entertainment anymore, it's actually trying to use similar principles to try to create an automata that can then be sent to Venus and explore all of its regions, all of its surface, by combining ancient technology with some of the modern research and modern technology. And that would definitely lead to the development of some of the more extreme electronics we've ever been able to create. But I guess the question here is, why can't we just send a regular probe on Venus and why exactly can't it survive for a very long time? And the answer here, temperature, pressure and a lot of corrosive materials on the surface of Venus that make any kind of electronics here last for only a few minutes, maybe an hour maximum. And even then, all of the data received from these electronics would be completely useless to us. Today, all of these silicon-based electronics can only really function at maximum about 150 or so Celsius. After that, they no longer work. So even if you were to cool down your probe dramatically, eventually the temperatures here will reach critical levels and you will be stuck with a broken probe on this very inhospitable planet. One of the solutions here is to try to use some other material like for example silicon carbide or gallium nitride to try to produce electronics that can survive in higher temperatures. 
Here, the conditions that gallium nitride, for example, can survive is usually around 400 degrees Celsius, but Venus is even more extreme than that. So even though these electronics might be able to survive on Venus a little bit longer and could potentially create programs that are days long instead of being hours long, we're still really early in the development of these technologies and only the studies from 2020 were able to create stable gallium nitride electronic devices that are still extremely primitive for what NASA needs them for. And so electronics for now are out of the questions on Venus. We have to use something else. And in this case, NASA realized that mechanical devices can definitely survive here. We just obviously have to figure out how to create a mechanical device that can not only withstand Venusian conditions, but can also then do everything else that a typical probe needs to do. It has to be able to navigate, it has to be able to sense everything around it, and it also has to be able to communicate with planet Earth. And so all of these challenges are now being addressed, and one of the missions that is trying to address all of them is this right here, the so-called ARI, or Automation Rover for Extreme Environments. But NASA realized that they can't really do this alone. In other words, they admitted to themselves that they were just not smart enough. They needed help from the public. So they opened a very interesting challenge known as Exploring Hell. And the idea was pretty simple. Submit your design and in this case, they were only looking for an idea for sensors to help this rover navigate the Venusian conditions and Venusian uh, surface. Because for the most part, they kind of already have a lot of things figured out. Like this right here is going to produce energy, there is enough components on the inside to give it mobility, but they don't really know how to sense the environment. The rover right here does not have any ways to see where it's going. And there was also a prize of about $30,000 that was going to be shared between three winners. But despite this challenge not really being widely shared and also widely announced, it had a lot of different submissions. Over 6,000 as a matter of fact, with over 400 different teams joining in to try to win this. And the winners had some of the more brilliant and more original designs I honestly have ever seen. So I wanted to kind of highlight some of them. The first place went to Yusef Ghali, whose beautiful sensors you can see right here it's all mechanical, it's all absolutely brilliant, and the way it works, um, I guess in some sense, blew NASA's mind. Yusuf is an architect and a designer from Cairo in Egypt, and he calls this device Venus Feelers. Essentially, it allows this rover to feel any kind of a rock or any other device, and also relies on a relatively simple mechanical system that actually would be very cheap to produce, would be extremely easy to maintain, and would allow this rover to survive on Venus for a very long time. I'm also posting these winner videos in the description below, so check out the links because a lot of this is absolutely mind-blowing. The second place went to these two mechanical engineers from Santa Barbara in California, and it's a team known as Team Rovertronics. Essentially, they created something that looks like this. It's a device that can sense and feel the rocks once again, but using a very different type of a mechanism that is actually just as good as the previous model in being able to navigate around a rocky terrain. The third place doesn't have a video, but this went to Callum Heron of Brisbane, Australia for the so-called direction-biased obstacle sensor, DBOS. This sensor combines a type of a windmill with a Stirling engine on the inside and is a lot more sensitive compared to the previous two winners in terms of detecting rocks and other obstacles for this rover. Apart from this, there was also the best prototype winner, and this was Christine Burza and Oscars Burz. These two designers are from Latvia, and it's really impressive that they were able to create all of this in only a few weeks. And as you can see from this video, it works completely by itself, it has no um, person driving this, and it's all mechanical, it's all autonomous, and only requires this to make. So check out their video if you'd like to try to make this yourself as well. And the most innovative award went to Matthew Reynolds, a mechanical engineer from the United Kingdom, for his design known as Echoes, Evaluate Cliffs, Holes, Objects and Slopes. Here it creates a mechanical sonar and this allows it to detect various large holes or actually even small holes in front of the rover, allowing it to traverse the terrain much easier. And so honestly, I am super excited to hear more about how this mission progresses in the next few years. And by the time we launch it, it's very likely that we might be able to combine the mechanical technology with some of the most advanced electronic technology that we currently are developing. Be it either silicon carbides that you see right here, or gallite nitrides that might create 
electrical devices that are able to survive on the surface of Venus. Which is why I think this mission is going to lead to some of the most extreme new technologies we've ever seen. And this beautiful competition that only cost NASA $30,000 might provide enough new advances for years and even decades to come. But this is only one of the missions that NASA and other space agencies are planning in the next decade, so there are definitely a lot of new things we're going to be talking about in some of the future videos. I definitely encourage you to check out the competition and the winners by yourself as well. All of the links for this are in the description below and all of the additional information is there as well. But for now we don't really know what exactly the mission is going to be like when it actually launches in the next few years. And we don't really know if it's even going to be successful. But just the fact that we're inventing new technologies just to meet this challenge already means that this mission has to go on. This mission has to continue because it will definitely help us develop something we've never had before. But I guess until we learn something else, or until we learn more about Venus, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention in this video. Check out everything I mentioned in the description below, also subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot, and maybe consider supporting this channel by buying the Wonderful Person t-shirt you can also find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.